when I first started 4-H, I didn't exactly know what 4-H was, obviously. I was super shy. I was nowhere near the personality that I am today. 4-H can be a lot of things. So now you have agriculture, you have camping, and now you have the STEM, which has turned into this entire huge thing, and it keeps evolving every single year with you know, different coding specialists, all that type of thing, to the point where there's even a STEAM building at Jackson's Mill now. Around 2018, right when I was graduating high school, I got a call from my extension agent, and he said, hey, we need this position filled for Harrison County. And I said, sure, sign me up. So during graduation week, I drove up and back from the mill in my high school to uh, partake in the STEM ambassador training. When I went to camp, I don't even remember having a STEM ambassador. Like that wasn't a thing on any camper's radar. So like to go back to camps and being like on level of, I'm gonna say popularity with the ECIs, like all oh, the ECIs, the STEM ambassadors, the health ambassadors even. Like that, it's super cool to see that evolution of STEM. But one of my backups was always teaching. So if I couldn't do computer science, if I couldn't do any say biometrics at the FBI, I always thought, oh, I would, I would, I would be a teacher. I think that would be a cool path. And to, to learn alongside these kids all these different STEM topics, like I was never that big into chemistry, that big into biology. Like we put soap on our finger and watched Pepper go to the sides of the play. I was like, that, that's super cool. This is for like eight year olds, but I'm having fun with it. I think it's extremely unconventional, the path I've taken, especially through my STEM ambassadors. If, I, if that call didn't happen, I would have stopped going to camps two years ago when I aged out.